Hey everyone, I'm Alice Bull and I run the Scrap Happy membership group, which is a membership group for scrapbookers to come and do fun things and challenges. One of the things we do is the load challenge, the layout a day challenge, and we have that ongoing right now. So that's been a lot of fun this month, but today we're here for Scrapbook Live. So super fun. It's our chance to connect, hang out together, and just do some scrapbooking. And I have my kit here. So every month when I do this, I try to work with a kit from the Wild Hair Kits. And these kits are custom curated, so you kind of get things that are tailored to you, but you don't choose them. So it's kind of that fun between a surprise packet, but it's a surprise packet with things that you like. Um, as a kid, I remember going to the candy store and they'd have little surprise bags and I bought one once and half of the candy in it was like, <laughs> like super yucky things that I don't buy. It's like, well, no wonder they were like, that's kind of what I realized that sometimes surprise bags were their chance to get rid of like old stuff. I think, so I think I clued into that at a young age. Um, but these are totally different because they're made for you. So it's not just like, you know, the leftovers. This is like all the good stuff that you're looking for. And you can be as specific or general as you like when you're leaving your directions um, for your kit. So, um, you know, sometimes I have a little bit of a plan of something that I'll list, but sometimes I just order the kit and say, I like these colors, these designs, and then I wait to see what comes and it's always super fun. So let's have a look in here. I will say if you were checking out my Insta story yesterday, then you might have had a little peek. Amy's nodding. She's like, I saw it. <laughs> I think Priella saw it. <laughs> So if you're looking for me on Instagram, it's at Alice Bowl, and that's B-O-L-L. Uh, Natalie says she snuck a peek too. Yeah, so we'll start off. There are some cute little puppy stickers. They have adorable little icons. There's a pair of glasses. There's uh, a camera, popsicles, bananas, some citrus, um, little hedgehogs, which are adorable. And my gosh, those would have been perfect during Calvin Ball. And strawberries, a couple flowers. Like It's just super cute. So let me show you that. So that's adorable and they, they're perfect. They're the perfect size. So if you wanted to put these into a planner, they're nice, but they're also good for like, you know how you just sprinkle on that little bit of love, like enamel dots or something at the end. These are kind of like a good replacement for an enamel dot just to mix things up. Also in here, um, there is a journaling pad. I'm going to open this up properly so that I can flip through it. Um, yeah, because this journaling bad pad is kind of cool. And I actually talked with Shamel about this um, at Creativation. So if you wanted to see the video where we kind of talk about stuff that's on my YouTube channel, it's uh, Scrap Happy YouTube channel. Uh, Sharon says, hello. And yes, they are cute. <laughs> so yeah, um, the journaling pad, she said, I wanted papers that, yes, we could use on our layouts. Yes, we could use as um, regular um, six by eight, six by eight pad. But she also wanted things that we could use just for notes. So if you wanted to like write a fun note to somebody, you could send that. So here's like a little sampling of the kind of pages that are in there. But you have some really fun, different kinds of pages for just writing notes or sending sending notes and just doing fun things. So um, it's a really different thing. I just love this paper so much. Let the sun shine in. Uh, yeah, so that was kind of fun. And you now you get some different images. This is part of her Sparkle City collection and it is um, definitely city based, but it also kind of has elements of city life in the collection along with a little bit of shine and glow and different things like that that are super fun a little bit of references to the signs so yeah really fun paper book and there's 36 36 sheets I was excited to get that because it's probably not something I would have picked up for myself but when I got it I was like well this is gonna be so fun and 
like some of it may make it into my scrapbooks, but some of this I will actually use for paper. And it's funny because I haven't actually bought like stationary paper, like for letter writing or something for years. And I don't know, like, let me know, were you one of those kids that like wrote letters when your kids had pen pals? Like I had pen pals around the world. I wrote to two of my cousins in Wales and I wrote to two girls in um, Malaysia and a guy in France actually. So I had a few pen pals and it was super fun. Um, here we go. This is um, a set or a packet not a set, of sequins. It's a sequin um, mix from Spiegel Mom Scraps and it's called Forever in Blue Jeans. Look at the lovely blues in this. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty good. Um, Sharon says she had a Japanese pen pal. That is so awesome. I just loved writing the little letters. I love getting the mail. I loved like I had like my whole like letter sash. I have no idea what ever happened to it. I'm sure my mom helped me um, declutter one time. So these are little stickers from Pebbles and they actually have like little sequins inside so that they shake. So they're little shaker stickers. So fun. So cute. Um, also here from Pebbles from that same collection, um, there are different uh, die cuts and they're kind of pool summer um, related. So very nice. Be able to pick through some of those. And then one last thing from that Pebbles collection is, are the stickers. And these are tiny stickers. And they kind of have like pool people, mermaids, flip-flops, all of those little summer icons. There's two sheets of them in here. So here we go. So very cute. And then, oh, I just love these so much. Um, these are called Colorful, and they are puffy stickers. I'm pretty sure they were from um the Vicky Booten collection somebody can correct me if I'm wrong but I think it was kind of related to her color kaleidoscope collection but these puffy stickers um they're super nice they're really pretty and they're words that I would actually use on pages so that's really fun that's in here now we're getting down to some of the papers super good um in the pack as well there is um a um, receipt that kind of tells you what's in your pack and there's notes at the bottom and she kind of highlights that so that you can kind of see the notes. It says, we hope you love this kit. We sent lots of products to help with tropical Hawaiian photos because I knew I was going, as well as some bits from Chamel's new collection, because that was one of the special things I had requested, because at the time, I hadn't seen anything, like I didn't have anything from Sparkle City, so. We especially hope you love the Darling Shaker stickers and the glitter and sequins throughout the kit. We also sent our May exclusive cut file. Enjoy your crafty besties at the Wild Hair Kits. And I got a little note, and it says, Hi, Alice. Happy Hawaii scrapping from Allison. So, super good. Okay, so the papers that are in here. First up is Maggie Holmes Sunny Days collection. So, look at the beach stuff here. How perfect is that? And, you know, you get your umbrellas and the suits and the hats and the little, all the good stuff. It has, like... A nice plain blue on the back so if I uh, don't need the, the busyness of the other side I've got a lovely back side for that one um, let's kind of organize these there's a few from that same collection so let's try to bring those out together um, okay so also from sunny days this is like maybe homes um, there is a cut apart sheet and I thought this was really cute, the way <laughs> the way that it has the tags here that you can cut. And it has like lots of little pieces. There's a nice black stripe. And let's see, uh, Dion says that Maggie Holmes paper would be perfect for telling your swimsuit story if you haven't already. It totally would. <laughs> it totally would. I bought myself my first sexy suit when I went to Hawaii. It's like the first one I've ever had where I'm like, ooh, baby. <laughs> and, you know, some people might say this isn't the most sexy body I've ever been in, but 
it's that level of confidence to be able to wear it on the beach. And I put it on and I walked out on the beach and I wasn't like this, like I didn't feel self conscious about it. And that meant that it was the right suit for the right time. So it was kind of perfect. Um, and I wore it like literally all the time. My other suit wasn't as comfortable and it was like more structured. So I ended up wearing that one like most of the trip. You'll see it in most of my photos actually from my trip. Um, there's another cut apart sheet and this, and actually if you look down here in this little thing, it says swimsuit and I just like, how perfect is that? <laughs> Um, also in here, we've got some Chamel Sparkle City collection. Look at this balloon paper. I just want to have like some kind of party and there's like confetti on the other side. Um, this paper is super fun. It has purple in it for anybody that's like, there's never enough purple. Sparkle City has some purple. Oh my gosh, this is cute. Um, then there's this fireworks paper. Oh, super nice. But I have to say the back side of this. Oh, okay, look at this. Um, look, there's like a little bit of ombre kind of different colors going on in here, but it's like this gorgeous ledger kind of grid paper. Not grid, it's a notebook paper. But it's on this turquoisey blue aqua. Oh yeah, that's super nice. And then finally, look at this paper from October afternoon. That's what it says, right? No, it's a Saturday afternoon. I said the wrong thing. Sorry. Just cut. <laughs> cut, cut. October afternoon is not the right thing. Saturday afternoon from One Canoe Two. It was the O that it kind of threw you off there. Um, I love that so much. That is um, beautiful and gorgeous. And it has some super cute little um, ice cream cones on the back. And then, I'll save this for a second. There is some specialty paper in here from the Sunny Days collection. And it has all of these numbers on it. Super cute. And there's a little bit of gold foil. You can see some of the parts have a little bit of gold foil. So it's just like that little peak to kind of accent it. So um, Sharon says anything turquoise. I know, I know. It's been like that for a while. Full scap, says Natalie for the line paper. I know. I haven't heard that that word actually for, for years. It was funny because my kids did not call it that at all. Um, uh, and Missy says, love the hexagon. And Natalie agreed that turquoise is her go-to shade and favorite color. So my, oh, okay. So I love pink a lot and I wear pink sometimes, not a lot. Yellow tends to be my favorite go-to color to wear. I love wearing yellow. Um, but then turquoise is definitely like in the top three and it's kind of sometimes at the top of the three when I'm scrapbooking. It's kind of one of my go-to colors for scrapbooking more. And this is the exclusive cut file that she talked about. Here, let me pop the little middle out of this so it looks cuter. And it says grow and look in the middle of the W. It has this cute flower growing in there. That is super fun. I did uh, pick up some uh, flower baskets to put in front of my house. Is it a pink table? Yes. Yes, this whole countertop, and it has roses all over it. <laughs> Sharon's like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I really love it. <laughs> it was like commitment level. This is my scrapbook room. <laughs> because where else would you put this? Like, um, you know, my husband's pretty understanding, but I don't think we wanted this in our kitchen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here it's perfect. Okay, so um, our, our uh, prompt for the day is um, from Load. Um, we're doing Load 519 Scrapbook Magic, and so I actually have a job to do, kind of. Um, basically, I use the prompts as inspiration, and if I end up um, slightly off prompt, prompt adjacent, I'm cool with it. It's all good. Um, it says, what makes... Uh, we're inspired by Peter Pan today and especially Tinkerbell and it said what makes you feel sassy feisty stubborn and hot-tempered make a page with attitude 
So I thought that was super funny. Um, and so I did print a couple of things. One is definitely not from Hawaii. One is from Hawaii. And I'm going to show you both of these. I think I'm going to scrapbook the second one. But when I started thinking about things that bother me and telling that story, I thought it would, could not be more perfect um, than this picture that I took driving out to my friend's house this winter um, following the snowplow. <laughs> So lots of snow. It was like a late snow again and following the snow plow who is doing like 60 kilometers an hour, which is really slow for you in the US. Um, what is that like 40, 35 probably for miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers and it was painful, but it's definitely part of driving in Canada. And it's not something I've ever kind of told before. So while it's super frustrating, I'm 100% happy we have snowplow drivers. But, you know, that's looking on the bright side. And um, I'll say that following a snowplow, oh, not fun. Sometimes it's your only choice, right? You just, I couldn't pass him. He was driving literally down the middle of the road, <laughs> cleaning like a little center strip. And I'm like, for miles, I was stuck by him. But it was fine because I was on a much cleaner road, which is safer, right? I've got to tell myself that. My next one, which is the one I think I wanted to focus on here today, is um, it doesn't have people in it. I don't know if I've actually ever done a scrapbook live where I scrap a photo that doesn't have a person in it. Because most of my photos have people in them. I don't take as many pictures of stuff. Um, I take more pictures of people or selfies with me in there. <laughs> so this one, um, we were snorkeling every day in Hawaii and we had the best time. The one day we went to this one area and it was great snorkeling. We had super good snorkeling there. Two days later we were driving. We weren't planning to stop for snorkeling, but you know, we had our stuff with us just in case, but there's like this la old lava flow that you get to go through and it feels like you're on a different planet right there. Um, so we went down just to experience that. And this is what we saw. The area that we snorkeled two days before was closed because there were sharks sighted in the area. And so this is like the little beach that we were on just two days before. And so in between there, between like the day in between those, we'd actually been talking to somebody at our hotel that we stayed at and well, the condo. And she said that that area was closed. And we're like, no, it wasn't. We're just there. <laughs> and she's like, no, they've had um, tiger sharks down there and they're nursing pups. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> we were literally, literally there. And like of all the sharks in the ocean, there's only some that I would be kind of like really a little panicky about. Tiger sharks are on that list. They're maybe at the top. <laughs> so I'm like... Okay, that's good. I'm glad we didn't see them. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Okay, I really want to use that die cut, but I don't think that fits with this. Um, we do have some lovely things. I wanted to pull out that paper that had the swimsuits and stuff on it because I think that that could be a little bit of fun for this. Um, I really like this hexagon paper. Hmm. I might want to go with that. Maybe I'll cut some pieces out of this. It'll feel kind of bad to chop it up, but who knows? Oh, I think we should look in those die cuts too. But we'll get started. Get started. Okay, so I'm gonna open up these die cuts from Pebbles to see all the fun things that are in there. Okay, <laughs> Kim says, do 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 do. Oh, I uh, know. Da 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 da. <laughs> right? Is that the that's the Jaws one, right? Sorry, I totally got like Twilight Zone on you there. <laughs> First, the wrong one. Um, okay, so there's a little fun thing. Too cool for the pool. Um, oh, some of these have glitter on them. Look at how shiny they are. Like with little little thin kind of whitish, clearish kind of glitter. Uh, thanks, squeeze the day. And it's 
sparkly too. It has a little glitter. Super fun. Splish splash. Hello. Dive on in. Happy day. The world is your oyster. <laughs> There's a cute little bee in here. So that's kind of fun to have a look and see all of the stuff. So lots of pool floaties. Hooray. Just relax. I need some vitamin C. Ooh, this could be good if I did like a little collage of things. Um, sunny days, happy day, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> um, so yeah, so maybe I'll pull out some more of those. That's kind of fun. There's more in the pack that's just part of them. Sunshine. This one has the glitter. There's a refresh pop. Um, this is my happy place. And you can look at the, the straws. You notice that the straws are like paper straws, right? <laughs> Brielle says, you can use the dive on in with a don't first. <laughs> That's super fun. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Um, orangey sweet. Thanks. Summertime. Sweet summer memories. There is a pineapple that says happy. Um, wish you were here. It's funny. Um, when I'm on holiday, I'm not thinking of anybody else. <laughs> summer is made for friends. Thank you. It's summer. YOLO. That, that, that could go on here, right? Like YOLO. That's, that's kind of funny. Take a picture, it'll last longer. Summer vibes, hi, sweet summer, summer. And there's like a little crab that says hello. Okay, so I can see how this could like build a little, little uh, thing with like lots of cute little bits. So that's kind of fun. I think I'd like to cut out some of the suit kind of stuff. Not all of it because, uh, you know, I might have that other page to make. <laughs> Um, Natalie says, do you have a too cool for school since fish swim in schools? I, I don't know. Is that what I, did I read one that said that? Maybe. And that would be kind of perfect for summer, right? With school being out. Uh, splish splash. I don't know. No, I didn't see one. It says too cool for the pool. <laughs> Anyways, so I've got some of that. I really like the hexagon paper, so I'm going with that. Um, this kind of works nice because I've got the picture. It has the um, the sign over on the side over here, and I think that'll kind of give me the feel if I have like a lineup of like the little things on the other side, and that'll give me um, that. Um, I think I'll do my journaling down here in this yellow section. Okay, I'm going to chop this up a little bit. Kind of like holding my breath while I say that. Like, it's like, no, don't, don't wreck the pretty paper. <laughs> but sometimes you just need to. Ooh, and I can like maybe put one of these little sparkly things in there too. So don't let me forget that. Awesome. Okay, let's go for it. Um, new, oh snap, colorful, fun, the good stuff, big. Laugh, <laughs> there's like live, love, laugh, or whatever, but the, the laugh, like this photo, <laughs> remember? Okay, good stuff. Gonna chop. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, Natalie says you could title it This Bites. <laughs> I have a stamp set. I actually have a shark stamp set. I'm going to grab it. I don't, I know I don't usually grab a lot of extra things, but where, where is it? I got to grab it. Um, 
Okay, so we're going to add this to this. Um, this is from Hero Arts. And I bought this when I was uh, in Seattle, actually, at a scrapbook store with my friend Kathy and uh, Tiffany Louder. We were there. Um, and Claire. Um, yeah, so we were, we were there. And there's things that say, let's have a bite. Friends till the inevitable end. You're so sweet. It's scary. You are fierce, drop dead, gorgeous. Have a killer birthday. Your kindness is killing me. So maybe I can like, like mask out some of the other stuff and use some of that. That might be fun. And there's like a little shark face. So I'm totally going to have to put that on there. Like, look at that little shark face. It's got to be on my page, right? Like, how can it not? <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's going to be fun. Um, punching something, a photo or paper with the edge of pinked edge. Oh, make it look like my page is bitten. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. So this is good. Um, I really like this uh, crowdsourcing ideas. Bring it on, people. <laughs> Tell me how to scrapbook today. This is good. I will confess I was up a little latish last night. So all of your ideas are welcome. <laughs> and I'm super excited because after this, I'm going down to my mom and dad's and we are having a pig roast like out on a spit. They're doing one practicing for my brother's wedding. So that's happening later. Oh, I don't think I posted up the happy hour. Maybe I'll get that done before I leave today. So that um, our happy hour from the other day, I totally forgot until I just said that. I'm like, I know I talked about this during happy hour. And um, we have a Scrap Smarter coming up this month, so everybody's welcome to come to that. It's uh, not just for Scrap Happy members. And our Scrap Smarter session, we are going to be talking about um, traveler's notebooks or like making a travel journal. And cute little suit. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> and Dion says, yes, please, on the happy hour replay. I missed it. And Natalie said, I love that. I was so sad to miss happy hour. Sorry. <laughs> I totally didn't think of it. Um, I think it was like processing on my computer and I ran downstairs to grab food and that was the end of that thought. So I'm usually pretty, I've been in a good habit of just doing it immediately, but I just didn't sit here for an extra 10 minutes or whatever after. So. Uh, it's developing those good habits, right? There we go. Oh, that's hilarious. I didn't show you guys the back side of this. Oh no, it had the ice creams. It has like this other pattern on it. I'll show you that. I, I just cut this off and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm not a fan of that. Like if that was another paper in the pack, not my thing, but this is pretty, uh, but this is gorgeous. So. <laughs> No judgment, right? <laughs> okay. So if you, are you working on your load page? If you're working on load, then I'd love to know about it. Oh, that's funny. Something's popping up on my thing. It says crop date in 30 minutes. Like, I think it's a little off. Um, yeah. So are you working on your load page and where has the Peter Pan prompt taken you? Are you scrapbooking something a little feisty today? Something a little exciting? Um, curious minds want, want to know. <laughs> okay. So I'll create the little, little thing that goes down the side here. <laughs> I'm not crafting this today, but uh, the prompt reminded me of a page I made earlier. I'm working on this. Uh, my husband just left to go grocery shopping so I can talk about it. I'm working on this super secret project for load and uh, for my anniversary. And uh, one of the prompts in this book I'm working out of is that um, 
what is something that drives drives you crazy or whatever and my husband always leaves all of the cabinet doors open in the uh, kitchen and so I scrapped the page <laughs> sorry I'm laughing so hard because that is such a pet peeve of mine <laughs> Although after I scrapped this, I realized one that makes me even worse is he puts back just a little bit of milk. And I'm like, I'd rather you just finish the milk and not put back just a little in the jug. But, and, but that happens less times than the cupboard doors. Every day I go in there, I'm like, it looks like somebody just opened up all the cupboards and went through the house. But yeah, so <laughs> I don't know, that kind of the sassiness reminded me of like every time I'm like, just close the cupboard doors, just close the cupboard doors. <laughs> Okay. Yep, that's uh that's I think I should get an award for overcoming obstacles. I, I've now scrapped through uh I had the flu earlier this week and now this morning our power has been out for three hours, so I have no electricity. So I'm scrapping by daylight and hopefully it comes back on eventually, but oh, <sighs> it's like everything keeps happening all at once. So well if that's three things now, maybe you're done, right? You know, things come in threes or whatever. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe that means your time has has passed, and you know it's uh, time to stop picking on Amy. <laughs> well, it's like I can't print pictures. I don't have any internet. Thankfully, my phone still has data, so I can be here. But like, no internet, can't print pictures. I got no electricity. Like, yeah, you you rely a lot of on electricity when when it doesn't work. So. Well, we had one of our live events scheduled. It wasn't, thankfully, a scrapbook live because I don't know what I would have done. But um, we had a live event, and my like phone is not good enough that I could run a live thing like this off of that. Um, so uh, my son was in the city, and I'm like, can I go to your house? I need to use your internet. I have a live thing. And he's like, yeah, I think my roommate's at work, so it should be fine. <laughs> like, just like, oh my goodness. So yeah, I went to his place and I used his internet and thankfully it was fine. But you know, it's just that, oh, like really, come on. <laughs> But yeah, our power was out for a while. I think it came on about 20 minutes into our live event, but I wasn't here to experience it coming back on because um, I was already there. So I was just glad that I'd made that decision early enough that I had time to pack up and go. Like worst case scenario, I had to cancel something or postpone something, like maybe not the end of the world, but you know, if I can prevent that, then I like to prevent that, so. I try not to reschedule because, uh, you know, mostly I set up the calendar and that works in my life at that moment. So who knows what else is going to work later, right? <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I just love this so much. <laughs> I'm a little yellow. Okay, so I've got some thick some foam tape here. Um, Teresa said that she had the flu this week too. Natalie said that she's using a great kit by Forever um, Joy Designs called Teen Parent Zone, which was inspired by the Twilight Zone. That's hilarious that I was like humming that. <laughs> we actually play this game. I don't know if any of you who ever played it, but if you're family or friends that you get together with once in a while, like games, or music stuff. Um, there's a game called Humbug. And it is so funny, guys. It is hilarious. So they give you a card, and we usually adapt the rules to kind of fit the group, you know, let's just say. Um, <laughs> ideally, you're supposed to pick from one of these two cat or categories after rolling a dice. We kind of usually just let that rule slide and just say, like, pick any of the one off of the card that you actually know and can manage to do so it uh, and then we kind of forget to keep points and <laughs> it's all good um, but super fun because 
it lists songs from different decades. So the card has like the 50s and 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and then it has like a miscellaneous kind of category and it'll have like Christmas music or um, like I'm a little teapot or just like something like that. Maybe something you would know from a commercial or something. Um, we've just had the best time playing it. And I'm not musically gifted let's just say <laughs> like <laughs> but my brothers are even less musically gifted than me like they're definitely one of those people that when they when they say you can't carry a tune in a bucket <laughs> like they can't carry it in a vat <laughs> like um yeah but but hilariously we all really think that that's a fun game so we've had some of the best times ever just trying to play the game and you end up walking away from it laughing more at um, the absolute failures <laughs> than you do at how amazing my brother-in-law Derek is <laughs> at the game. <laughs> He's the only one that can beat me because my, the rest of my family isn't musical. <laughs> but he married in, <laughs> so he doesn't have the broken genes. <laughs> Yeah, super fun. That's really good. But yeah, the whole humming the songs. The one time I'm like, I could not think of the Star Wars theme. It was just like, I'm like, it's a, uh, I just couldn't think of it. And so I'm like, pew, 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 pew. And like, of course, I'm like doing laser, like waving my lightsaber around. And they're just like, Star Wars? <laughs> like, yes. They're like, okay. So the music part was like gone by then, but <laughs> you know, it was all in good fun. So one of our uh, prompts recently was to tell like an epic tale. And the one I chose to talk about was my kids um getting to go with my brothers um to the mountains for whitewater rafting and then they went zip lining and then they went kayaking down the river that's by my town here but it's like a really fast moving river it's not like when we played on so i was like what you took them on there <laughs> just a little little concerned just a little um but anyways they had a super fun time it was epic adventures with my with my brother and then um, while they were on the kayak, a fish actually jumped into my son's kayak. <laughs> like, they didn't have fishing gear, they didn't have nothing. He was like kayaking and this fish jumps in to his boat. And so I'm like, I didn't really ever think that happened. So there is this Bert and Ernie skit um, that I grew up with and Bert and Ernie are out fishing on the lake and you know, Bert wants to be all quiet and Ernie's like, oh, cool. So he leans over the boat. Here, fishy, 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 fishy. Anybody else remember this or just me? That's all good. Um, but anyways, like this is the thing. And of course, like Bert's like, that doesn't work. And Ernie's like, yeah, you just have to do it loud enough. And so they yell and eventually the fish actually jump into the boat and it's hilarious. Like, it's cute, right? Sesame Street. Um, yeah, so <laughs> he literally had that experience fish jumped into his boat and uh yeah it's uh kind of became one of those epic stories and that this is i remember that <laughs> uh, heather told me that that was the mecco version of the theme song for star wars <laughs> like pew, pew. <laughs> yeah just you know whatever works right you gotta do what works did i make that straight it doesn't look straight is something not straight on here? Is that why this doesn't look straight? My husband always tells me that I hang pictures crooked. And I'm like, it's not on purpose. <laughs> not on purpose. Just kind of figuring out some layers. 
Uh, all the education going to good use. <laughs> well, you know, you learn how to count on Sesame Street, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> Yeah, that's, does anybody else still want to count to 12 like that? <laughs> if you, if you grew up when I did, that was how every person in my school would count to 12. Natalie says, classic, I do it all of the time. <laughs> and Sharon said, that was my kid's program. <laughs> so you heard it in the background when you're like busy doing other stuff and you're like, oh, thank goodness they're occupied for a few minutes. <laughs> The other way to count to 12, though, Alice, was the ladybug's picnic. Do you remember that? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and they all had fun at the ladybug's picnic. That's the other Sesame Street 12. <laughs> and see, I just don't remember that one as much, but like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they're showing like this little marble on this little marble. Yeah, the marble run. Marble. Oh, my God. There have been acapella groups who have done covers of that one, actually. <laughs> That's extra funny because, you know, like, it's just the things that get into our psyche, right? The things that we think of from, from our childhood. Um, and Di says, I love that one. Like the ladybug picnic, saying it to my girls, we were in the park enjoying a picnic. <laughs> so that's just perfect, right? It's like all of your worlds kind of coming together and colliding in, in this perfect way. Um... Okay, we got some sequins that I wanted to use a few of them. I think down here I'm gonna like create like a little row of them and we'll see if that works. <laughs> we'll see if that works. But um, I think I need to make my shark cutout. Where did I put those stamps? Somewhere out here, right? Terrible. Oh, stood them up. Um Uh, uh, Sharon says, I'm from the era of I'm a little teapot. And anyone remember Tweety Bird and Sylvester? Yes, <laughs> very much so. Uh, I taught, I taught, pooty cat. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> okay, so I need a block. Oh, I've moved them. Not helpful. <laughs> Oh, I have a random stamp that I took out of a kit, and I can't remember which kit it came out of. So I'll need to find that sometime. So it's sitting here on one of my blocks. Oh, yeah, the other ones are gone, so I'll just leave it on my microphone so I don't totally lose it. That happens, and my ink. <laughs> Sharon said, yeah, but I had them on the 30, 33 RPM record. <laughs> I had a little record machine. I had like, like the little, the little tiny records. Is that the 30, the 33s are the big ones, right? But yeah, I had to like these little tiny ones. Oh my gosh. I just love them. I did like the books on tape and I have done a, done a page about the books on tape and how I was obsessed with them because they were just the best thing ever okay so i know there was a cut apart sheet that has stuff that one doesn't have anything i can really write on they're all like embellishmenty kind of things this one this one because i needed some i could stamp the the, the little shark guy onto just plain paper, but I would like to have them on some kind of textural something or other, right? So I think that would be better. So. Something that looks menacing. <laughs> I think the blue would just kind of, well, that blue might be good though. I can try it. Okay. 
that up. Um, <laughs> yeah, needing the adapters for the 45s, classic. <laughs> the 45s, oh, that's right. <laughs> And Natalie says, I remember playing eight tracks in our boat. I have like the worst eight track story. So <laughs> your kids, I was probably like 11 or 12 maybe. And so my brother is three and a half years younger than me. And mom had us out in the field and we were, she was just letting us drive this old car through the field, right? Like it's this old hay field and it was, didn't have like, hay in it right then because it had been cut or whatever so she's letting us drive in the field and <laughs> she's with us so you know it's not like she just gave us a car so <laughs> she's with us out in the field and I'd had my turn and then I'd sit in the back seat and my brother was driving and she told him to stop because he started getting a little bit get, going to, a little too fast going down a hill so he hit the brakes and so <laughs> cars like stopping well up on the back window of this car was one of those boxes so i don't know if anybody's too young to remember the boxes that eight trucks went into you know they're like big suitcase like you know big heavy boxes <laughs> And this thing came and bashed me in the back of the head. I'm sure, I'm sure like it just about knocked me out. Like I was like, oh. it was uh, bad. So that is one of my eight track memories because um, yeah, that car had the eight tracks. <laughs> and the other is listening to Roger Whitaker on eight track and he had the whistling song and he just whistles through the whole song and it was the best thing ever. And then I tried to, like, as an adult, I tried to, like, stalkerize it and find it. Yeah, it, it was super hard to find. I finally did, but, you know, it was, like, hard to find. Okay, so I've got my shark face. I don't know. It's a little too dark. What do you think? Should I try doing it on a lighter one? Is that too dark? <laughs> can see it, but I don't know if it'll stand out enough on the page. Although it matches really nice with that whole swimsuit thing. Um, maybe I should do a couple of them because then I could have a few of them dotted around, you know, shark sided. <laughs> Did you see the shark? Oh, and there's like a cute little shark fin. I'll try to get that on here too. Um, Uh, Brielle says, cute. Yes to making a few of them. <laughs> Natalie says, my Fisher Price record player was my favorite toy as a toddler. It had five or six plastic records with grooves since it was actually more like a music box that played. Oh, I totally had one of those. Oh, so funny when you like realize that, you know, we all kind of have this shared, um, this shared childhood experiences, right? Whether it's like, you know, specifically yours or, you know, things that get handed down from your parents' <laughs> generation sometimes. Um, Natalie says her most memorable eight track song was Cher's Dark Lady. I almost scrapped it as my story for our load, Love Potion number nine prompt day. <laughs> yeah. I, I put Cher on the top of my like favorite vocal artists list by the way like I pretty much she may have my top billing I don't know like trying to think if there's somebody that I love they're singing more than Cher I'm having a hard time <laughs> because she's literally one of my favorites okay now we've got like a lighter colored shark. Oh yeah, I like this. I'm gonna like sneak them around here. Ta -da, ta da like little hiding sharks. Perfect, this is fun. Um, I think it'll go fine on there. Um, 
What, and Natalie said, what's super fab is that others have posted pictures of old toys like that record player. So eventually I'll be able to document all about my toys, even the ones for which I don't have family photos depicting those. Thank you, internet resources. Yes. <laughs> um, I remember that I had the Camp Town Races song. That was the one that I remember from my little thing. So Camp Town Races. And I'm sure if somebody like listed off the other songs, I'd be like, yep, yep. Cause we probably all had exactly the same set of little records. <laughs> but isn't it funny how you hear something like that and it just takes you back to that time. Totally takes you back. Um, I'm thinking we haven't had a musical well, no, we did actually have music. We did Broadway inspired um, load last October, and that was amazing. And then um, years ago, we had a members only load that was um, musical mayhem. It was actually a May one that was just for the members, by the members, for the members. And so that was uh, another one where. I, um, yeah, it was really fun because it's really funny to see which songs kind of spark something for different people. And of course, like you can use the songs to tell different stories. Like when, even during this load, we had inspiration from Love Potion number nine and it wasn't, um, Heather, is it Heather du Dewberry or Heather? Torvi, who's who's on here? I remember Heather Torvi. Yeah, so it must have been you and Heather Dewberry because she actually ended up leading our little our little random group, and it was it was so fun to come up with. That was the first time I was helping to come up with load prompts, and I was not running Scrap Happy yet, so I had a really fun time with that. And uh, I think there was about five of us, which is a lot to try to coordinate. So Heather thankfully stepped up and was like. Okay, <laughs> let's have some direction here. This is what's gonna happen. That was good. Um, yeah, so that was, it's been really fun. Um, okay, so I've got some sharks now. What did I just do with one of them? I just lost, oh, here it is. I need a couple more little pieces that go in here. And then I can work on my titling and I'll have space down here for journaling. This is looking good. This is looking really good. <laughs> and just like the little secret, of you, like the little things, like putting a YOLO on there, just that just cracks me up, right? It's, it's funny. <laughs> YOLO. Go on, go swim with the sharks. It's all good. <laughs> um, Yeah, like when we scrapbooked about like Love Potion number nine, like we weren't actually scrapbooking about the song, right? We were talking about, it's actually like, you think, oh, it's a love song. Not really. <laughs> but it kind of has like a not good ending for the guy, right? Gets this little bottle of Love Potion broken. So we kind of use that to inspire our story, right? Something with a happier ending or whatever I think this is that what we said for that one maybe um this is so cute I'm, I'm just loving putting all these little pieces together it's like you know fiddly kind of stuff but it's gonna be good Ooh, I've got a little stamp here too that has like a little shark fin sticking out of the water. I'm gonna stamp that onto this layout right here. I might have to move this a little. Um, it's totally sticking it on upside down. It's like, woo, somebody should have had more sleep last night. If you can't stick this stamp onto the block, we're not in good shape. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have stuck this down yet. Okay. Mm. 
Hmm, look at me stamping on a page. That's like amazing. How often do you have stamps that would be perfect for something and you realize that after? <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> and I always have really good intentions of using them when I buy them. So, so this is good. This is really good. Good. Okay. So that's on there a little bit. I don't have my stamp cleaner here ready, but let's put that there. Now I can finish creating a little display here. Here, I don't think that fits right there. Either. I need one more little embellishment. Ooh, I wanted to use one of these. I don't know, that's like more of a pool floaty. There's like a flower. I'll use the flower. I just want one on here. <laughs> Baby shark. <laughs> um, I don't think I know that song. Um, it's like raffy or something right like something like that natalie please no baby shark says heather <laughs> dion says thanks for that natalie i had just about gotten it out of my head now it's back <laughs> I, I, think I, waiting, I think i managed to miss that one <laughs> i was waiting to see if somebody was gonna sing it <laughs> <laughs> you're up deborah you're up <laughs> wait a minute somebody's gonna do the baby shark song <laughs> Where, where's the lady that just did the ant picnic song? She needs to do the baby shark one. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, it's that good, is it? <laughs> I, I really think that I've missed that one. So Jacob's just learned it. He's doing his lifeguarding courses, and my eldest uh, just learned it as teaching the little kids to swim. And I'm like, okay, well, you keep it at the pool, dude. It's not allowed to come into this house. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not Raffi? Oh, Natalie says, Alice, do not listen to it ever. <laughs> Sheila says, I'm a Girl Scout leader, and I'm so over it. And Stacy says, I hate it. Oh. Don't, when my, when my Natalie says, don't link him to that highness melody. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Obviously, I think he has some other baby thing that I think that I'm, I must be mixing it baby up. Baby beluga. That one oh, yeah, nice. that's what it is. <laughs> so, diff something different. Uh, well, she listens to Alice YouTube it later uh, or, yeah. or save myself from the, the harm, right? <laughs> you know, when my great niece comes to visit, I put her in the living room and have Alexa play it for her. And she dances and she sings and keeps her occupied because I don't have kids toys in my house so other than sitting there you know the other option would be to sit in front of the tv and you know the other is just too cute uh, that's super fun well, well it's funny have the baby shark song isn't even there, on that new you know <laughs> the baby shark song's been around for a long time I sang that when I was a kid at like summer camp so that's all but, for... but look how young yeah. you are my dear <laughs> well okay <laughs> I know I'm young, but like, you know, 15, 20 years ago, I knew that song. So in fact, it's just funny to me that it's becoming hip and popular now, like 15, 20 years ago. I'm like, well, who doesn't know that song? Like, I've known <laughs> that song for years. Like, why is it such a big thing now? Like, it's really funny how things come and go and like go around in circles like that on, on the internet, right? Because it's like, why that? <laughs> why? <laughs> Um, my husband and I still chuckle all the time about that uh, Rebecca Black Friday song. <laughs> I just laugh. Like, it's, it's like one of those things that's so bad. But you look at the video and like they really tried hard to make it something that was that bad. <laughs> like they, they really had to work at it. But it's kind of catchy. Like as flat and as toneless as her voice is, it's kind of catchy. <laughs> Sheila says, I'm trying to talk my daughter into singing it to you. Please, please come sing it to us. Um, I'm trying to think. I know your daughter's name. Will it help if I say it out here? <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> um, I'll find you the link of the movie. Um, 
where a man talked to the dad into singing it with a cat shark a cat shark bed on his head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, super funny, right? Like just the stuff that comes around, right? So good. Um, Natalie, what were we going to call my page? I'm already forgetting like short memory, something. About that bites? It bites? That, yes, it bites. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, we crowdsourced the perfect thing and I've forgotten it. This is a crime. <laughs> oh, I was going to take a little uh, character off of here and pop in a couple of these little stickers into my little schmoo thing that I've got going on. And And there's no sharks in these stickers. It's only like nice little oceany animals. <laughs> no sharks. <laughs> okay. Well, this is like looking really close to done-ish. Like, you know, titling, but it feels good. I'm liking this. I don't know if I'll do my thing with the sequins. Maybe we'll try. I'll give it a shot. Um, Need kind of a big one. Ooh, a mermaid's perfect. Well, there's a clear stickers. Okay, that's not gonna work the way it is. I'll just pop it on here and cut it out. Fussy cutting. <laughs> She's got a cold. Oh, okay, so that's fine. She'll she'll leave me in the dark. No baby shark. <laughs> <laughs> Super funny though. Your daughter is an amazing Girl Scout cookie salesperson from what I've seen online. So I have to give her mad props for that because, uh, you know, she, uh, from what I remember seeing, she sold a lot of Girl Scout cookies. And I can say that I like to buy Girl Scout cookies. So if you're close to me, I'd be one of her customers. <laughs> so probably a good thing that you're not because I actually don't know a lot of Girl Scouts right now. I kind of run into them at like the grocery store or something like that, right? They'll set up there. Okay, well, that's cute. That's going on here. Um, I need dinner tape. Um, send me the link in Messenger. Oh yeah, it should work. fun. Uh, yep, just the places that you can go with your scrapbooking, right? Just cracks you up. Okay, and I need a little something for down here, so maybe I'll do another one of these little stickers. Mm, oh, that's cute. Let's do a little octopus. It's not a shark and all, and I didn't actually see an octopus while we were sk snorkeling on this trip. Although I really, really tried, <laughs> really, really tried. Uh, Sheila says 1,000 boxes and all in the middle of James being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Oh my gosh, that was like horrendously scary when you were posting about that. Um, 1,000 boxes, guys, like Girl Scout selling 1,000 boxes of cookies. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't... So, you know, if she's already got these uh, mad skills, you know, maybe, um, maybe there's other business opportunities in her future. Just saying, right? Like sales and doing that kind of stuff is a pretty good area. Maybe that's an area of specialization for her. Because <laughs> obviously she's got the talent for that. And the drive to do it. Um, okay. Oh, I think I need one more of my little uh, shark. 
stamps or something. No, I can put little, little sequins right there. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Oh, I should pop that little sharp right there. Okay, well, this little section-y, collage-y, whatever you want to call this thing that I'm creating here is nearly done. And next, I will add a few little sequins on here. And... Jacqueline says, I just broke out the glitter because uh, today with the Peter Pan, the technique prompt says, I didn't read this, um, technique, use green, there's a little green on here, um, and feel free to spread a little pixie dust or glitter around. Heather says, no! <laughs> I said, feel free. I didn't say you had to. <laughs> But it's funny how you kind of get to know what people like and don't like. Um, oh, no, that's next one. So when you see the next prompt, the one that comes out tonight, <laughs> I'll be thinking of Hannah. <laughs> It'll be a, a, one of those things where I'm thinking of Hannah. But, you know, just the different little things just remind you of different people. Very fun. Okay, so here's this. Oh, that one's not stuck down. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna hold this up like you and your fussy cutting. I know, right? <laughs> Heather says, you realize I live in a glitter-free zone. You don't even have glitter glue? Like, I don't actually have loose glitter in this room. Um, I brought it in here for my ruby red slippers when I made my sparkly red shoes and I'm still finding red glitter in my room. <laughs> yeah. So, um, since then, yeah, that, but that's been like the only time I've had glitter in this room, like almost forever because, um, as much as I love shiny, sparkly, glittery things. It was like a no. <laughs> no to the loose glitter. <laughs> okay. Um, this bites. And I, ooh, and I didn't do, oh, okay. So I'm going to do this up here. Should I test it on a piece of paper to see what it makes it look like a bite? I need to make it look like a bit like a shark bite, right? Does that look a little bit like a shark bite? Kind of works, maybe? <laughs> okay, so practiced tested check the skills i'm gonna cut off the top corner of this like a shark bite because you know that would be that was fun fun idea There we go. Is it too like too toothy? I think it's okay. <laughs> so there we go. I might layer some of the white in behind there just to fill the corner. Yeah, I think that would be good. Okay. So okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. I love Natalie says, I love the theme cheesiness. I'm all over that. <laughs> I'm all over that. Okay. So I need some letters. 
Um, I have some navy ones in little tiny ones. Maybe I'll grab those. So it's feeling that navy is kind of popping off of this page. Not green, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, and... oh, I almost feel that I should have a bigger word for bites. Okay, sorry, one more. I'm gonna try one more. <laughs> Different shade of blue. There we go. Not together with that very well. I could use the white ones, but they won't show up. Hmm. I don't have any other bigger worm. I've got some that are a little bigger in navy, I guess. Yeah, these are a little bigger. I guess I'll use these. I'll use these and these. Yeah, they're almost twice the size. It's good. Okay. Sorry, found it. I guess we're good. Moving on. Moving forward. Just line these up. Love these little letters, though. They're super cute. And in the packet of these ones, they have, um, oh, where they go? There's these ones. They were like part of Paige Evans' questions. They're called, I think they're called Happy Life <laughs> 494. So they're probably the right thing. Sometimes my packet, they, they end up in the wrong packets, but they have white letters on one side, and then they have the navy ones on the other side. So in the packet, you get both colors, and that's been really fun because depending on what your paper is like, you, you have light zones and dark zones on some papers. So you always kind of have something that's going to show up depending on your background. Now, I'm just not feeling these letters. They're just like, I need something bigger, maybe a different color. So, Looking at this page, yellow is definitely a color that I have popping off of here. I know that I have. There's not a lot of yellow thickers out there, just let's say. But I may have some stickers. Maybe those. Oh. Okay. One more time. I'll try to get done this right this time. <laughs> These are great. They were like, it's made for it. I found the perfect thing. So persistence guys, persistence and having a gazillion options, all good. <laughs> so here we go. I found these, they're old. They're from uh, basic gray. So they're a little old and they are perfect with the colors on this page. So 
Yay. So I always line my titles up on clear rulers because I like to be able to move them around so I can see exactly where I want to stick them. And thankfully there's actually all the letters I need in here. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, they're in slightly randomy order. Uh, Natalie says, I love them. I think that, uh, you know, um, I pretty much never get rid of the letters. They eventually reach a point where they're not super useful. And then um, I try to repurpose them for something else, right? Whether it's a uh, background or, you know, I'm not very good at mixing alphas. It's not a look that I've ever really loved like that using four different alphas to create your titles or something like it's never been a thing that I've super loved. I don't mind mixing like different words with different alphas. So that's fine. So that works out really good. Um, and I found that if you don't have like a ton of letters, there's actually a, um, you can find a Scrabble helper online and you can type in the letters that you have and it will pop out different word options that you could spell. So sometimes you can like, you know, if you have some, like a couple of vowels, right? Like say you actually have like two E's left and then you've got a couple of letters. You can type those into your Scrabble helper and it only lets you put in like what, eight letters or something, right? But um, at least it kind of gives you a couple ideas of things that you might be able to spell and uh, use those um, letters for, so. Okay, this is perfect. Yay. Okay. And I love how it's going to sit with the little this because that's going to look great. Yay. I thought another thing that we might see for layouts with uh, the theme, the sassy kind of Tinkerbell thing, I thought we might see some snarky or sarcastic pages like with stuff like that. And I do have a couple of, uh, like I, I've got some stamp sets that are more on the snarky and sarcastic <laughs> side. I was showing my son, um, a little card front that I made the other day and it's a uh, you know not for mixed <laughs> not for mixed audiences if there's like children present I'm not going to read this aloud and if swear words offend you please cover your eyes <laughs> but um, this is what I made <laughs> and yes it says what you think it says <laughs> And I was like, hmm. it was just really funny. I had ordered like a um, that all the new releases from Ink Road, and it was one of the ones that was in there. And I'm like, oh, I have somebody I could give that to. <laughs> and it's so scripty and it's really fancy. I know. <laughs> yeah. My son, he kind of looked at it and he's like, what does that say? <laughs> it was like super funny. He's 20, so you know. <laughs> It's not like a, I'm corrupting a little child. I'm just, you know, it's all good. But yeah. Okay. But yes, Ink Road Stamps has some pretty, um, I've got a sarcastic -y one too. I'm trying to think of if I have that one here or if it's coming in the mail. They've got some really fun things. Um, there's the one about crafting and <laughs> it says hoarder, oh, cross out, curator of craft supplies. <laughs> Our friendship is perfectly crafted. You're the only one worthy of this masterpiece. <laughs> uh, maker's gonna make, oops, I arted. <laughs> Don't make me get the glitter. <laughs> 
Uh, love you more than patterned paper, fussy cutting, sequins, glitter, washi tape, stickers, stamps, on the road to recovery at Cross Out, the craft store. You're simply craftastic. So that was super fun. So Ink Road Stamps, they, uh, they have super interesting things that crack me up. <laughs> uh, Natalie says, I'm going to sign up because I don't have a lightning surge protector on this computer and the storm is right overhead. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, Sora. See you, Natalie. We literally went through that Thursday. Thursday was our thunderstorm day. <laughs> Okay, so this bite, love it, that looks awesome. And now I'm going to add a couple little sequins and call this thing maybe done. Maybe, maybe it needs a little glitter, right, Heather? <laughs> or, or do sequins kind of almost count as glitter? I'd say they almost count as glitter. <laughs> um. Oh, I should have had this upside down. It's a moment. Yeah. Who would think that that word could look so pretty? That's the key. I know. I know. Um, yeah, but I'd also played with um, this one. I've got this Ewok one. And then I've got uh, this droid one that I made. I was playing around. And... This is not from Inkro. This is different, but sending monster size wish, wishes for your birthday. And I added little googly eyes onto them, which is fun. I actually added googly eyes onto a page that I made the other day. And it was like, hee -hee. like it just made me smile so much to do it. And uh, it was, we had a day that was inspired by Dr. Seuss. And I actually had pictures of us at a Dr. Seuss ride, and I knew I hadn't scrap up to that yet from when we had gone on our trip. So I, uh, I decided it was the perfect time to uh, remedy that, and I did a little page about our Dr. Seuss ride, since I, since I had such nice pictures, right? <laughs> um, and um on the background paper on the one side it was like all these little polka dots kind of thing and then i mixed in these little tiny googly eyes so this is the page it's just us in front of the cat and the hat stuff in that area and then i've got like some little wooden hearts but if you look it's not just polka dots over here they're actually little googly eyes so when you shake the page, you can hear like it kind of shakes. So it's kind of fun, right? I'm like, anything that's like just a little bit different, I'm like, woohoo, that's great. That's gonna be great. Super fun. Okay. Now, if Christina Sorge saw me doing this, she'd be like, Alice, sew them on. <laughs> and I'd be like, no. <laughs> That's what glue's for. <laughs> oh, darn it. This one is reaching the end of the bottle, but you know, I'm stingy, so I'm trying to get my money's worth out of it. Stingy when it comes to glue. And like, it's like, okay, if you have a budget for scrapbooking, which, um, you know, I, at various times I have different, differing budgets, but when you have a budget for scrapbooking, and even if you're not having a budget, who wants to spend money on glue when you can buy pretty paper or embellishments or die cuts or <laughs> a stamp set or <laughs> like anything that's like more fun than buying glue. <laughs> That's just kind of where I sit on the whole shopping thing. So when I'm like using up things like glue, I'm like, eh, yeah, I'll, I'll use it. But I make sure that I try to get my, uh, my value out of it.
Okay, I think that's okay. There's one more in there. And then I think this is pretty good. Although, it could use a little glitter glue. A little glitter glue is always good, right? I just want one more. Okay. I think I've said this is pay this was done like 14 times. And then I'm like, oh, just this. Oh, just that. <laughs> Actually, I went to take a picture of my page last night. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I was gonna put this other thing on there. So I've literally taken the picture, I edited the picture. And then I added something else, so I just took a new picture of my page. True story. Um, there. And just as bad as glitter, all this stuff is sticking to me too. Okay, here we go. Here's the page. The journaling is going to be written down here because I added by hand afterwards. So that was pretty good. Yeah, Heather, I should be storing it upside down. I actually have a, a tube of washi that I try to set it into, but usually I only think of it once, I, um, once I'm actually doing the thing. So there's my page, it's got the bite out of it, and I'll journal here. I've got like a little collection of fun, little summery beachy things, including my swimsuit. <laughs> so that turned out good. I may look at it when I'm doing the thing, um, when I'm, when I'm adding the journaling and I may add a little bit of glitter at that time, but for now, this is looking pretty great. So I'll throw that up there, give that a chance to dry. And now I'm going to scrap with this other picture because we still have some time and you know, if anybody wants to go, that's fine. After we do the draw, which we're going to do right now, it took me a while. So we'll do the draw. Um, 28 participants. One of them is me. So thank you, everyone. There's like lots of comments that say nice. Um, so we have a random number generator here that we're going to pull up. Random generator. Okay, so 27, because we don't count me, and I will hit generate, and it says 17. So let's have a look. Mary, Mary, you are number 17. So congratulations to Mary. I need you to email me at support at scraphappy.org to claim your prize. Um, oh, I typed it just to Mary because I clicked on her name. So Mary, please email me um, at that uh, email so that you can collect your prize. Just type in the subject, um, scrapbook live winner, and we'll get you your stuff so that you can do that. So please give me an email. So you will get the chance to fill out your own style profile and um, get your own custom curated kit. Um, when you get your kits, they don't have the same things that mine have in them unless you're like, please send me everything that Alice has had in it from this time. So sometimes she can do that, but it's uh, a lot of, um, you'll fill out your style profile. So she'll kind of see what color schemes that you like. And if you have any special projects that you're working on, if you like to do double pages, if you like to do like, um, traveler's notebooks or journals or planners you kind of fill all of those kind of details in so she can make sure that your kit fits um, your style of scrapbooking and the things that you're interested in like so, so yeah congratulations to Mary I um, 
I'm excited for you <laughs> because I know how much I love my kits. And like, I say this very freely because, um, I buy the kits myself. I pay for my own kit. And then the one that we give away is sponsored. But I think by me buying my own kit, it's like, look, I, I like this enough that I'm happy to promote it and say, this is a great thing. Um, you know, it's like putting my money where my mouth is. So Mary is our May winner. And I don't have your info, Mary. So you've got to send me the, in send me your info. Okay. Um, yeah, just your email I'm is here. fine. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> awesome. I didn't know how to type on my phone in this program. So yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. I'm excited to win. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, you have to go back and forth. Uh, mobile is a little more difficult, but congratulations. And yeah, it's support at scraphappy.org. Remember the dot org. Okay. Really important. <laughs> so yay. Congratulations. That's great. Uh, Diane said, I got some Sunday school photocopying and some art journaling done. Yay. Um, so that's good. Okay. So I'm going to do my other page, the one with the snow, because I think that telling the story from that is going to be like, that's a good idea. It's like something really Canadian. And I think that um, even though I have like these papers out here that are super summary. Oh, did you have another question? Um, I'm gonna pin up my video and I'll put you on mute there. So even though I have these papers that seem really summary, I'm pretty sure I can make something work here for a page that is a little more wintry. So I think that's going to be a fun challenge for this next part. Ooh, look at this paper right here. Okay, so this is in the Chamel Sparkle City. And this paper right here, that looks kind of snowy to me, right? I'd say snowy-esque, let's, let's go for it. And look, it's like a beautiful turquoisey aqua color. <laughs> so let's do it. And I think sometimes it's really easy to look at a collection like the Sparkle City and think, oh, I don't live in a city. I don't do this in a city or whatever, right? Like you think, about certain elements of a kit. And really it's not necessarily that. Um, I see it a lot of times, like they'll have elements that allow you to go in this direction with a kit, but it's not necessarily all about that. So I think things like this that uh, push you out of your zone where you're kind of thinking about it in a certain way. But here I've got some great pieces but I think that this black stripe from the back will be super good. It's very stark and dreary and that's kind of how winter is here. <laughs> so it's kind of perfect. Um, yeah. I'm going to just randomly build up some layers and we'll see what that looks like in a minute <laughs> and where I want to take it from there. Here we go. There's like up and at them, dream big, dance it up. Hmm. You can always do that, but that's a little tone on, oh, it's nice though. Nice little bit of tone on tone. I guess I could use this for matting. What else do I have? Oh yeah. Shades of blue, pulling it into there. That would be good. Okay. 
I'm going to just turn that. And I've got the cutoff piece. Well, that one doesn't really have much on it, does it? Okay. okay, let's have a look through here. Let's see what else I have. Um, yeah, okay, so just planning out the new page. I know that I want to talk about um, the fact that, you know, I'm stuck behind the grader and that's like not a fun thing for. <laughs> oh, there's like little cars across the top of this. That could be great. Oh, I like that better than if I want it together. Ooh, let's pull that. That's another color. And maybe some of that. Okay, so I think we've got some, uh, papers now. Okay, Ty says it seems like it looks like snow outside with all the cottonwoods dropping their seeds. Oh, it's like thank goodness it's not snow. <laughs> Do you have any um, allergies or get stuffed up at this time of year? Um, it's like we have uh, poplar trees here, and they are super bad. She says yes. <laughs> so the breathing thing becomes a problem. Um, yeah, we have a, uh, we have poplar trees here, lots and lots of poplar trees. And yeah, they have like horrible <laughs> stuff. It gets so fluffy. Um, my husband actually does refrigeration and air conditioning. Yes. In Canada. <laughs> and, uh, with his work, um, the spring, like when the trees start to release all of their fluff and stuff, like the poplar trees are super bad for it. Um, it just plugs up all of the condensers. So he gets a little busy at this time of year, <laughs> just in doing the maintenance. I keep wanting to put this underneath there and then I keep not wanting to cover it up. <laughs> so I'm battling myself over this. There, I think I might have found the compromise. So. Yeah, that becomes a big thing. Um, I've been lucky to not have too bad of allergies. Um, I never had any growing up, but as an adult, I've uh, discovered how unpleasant they can be. Although I'm like super lucky, like I can, I barely count, so. I think I'm gonna stretch this by cutting it. So it's kind of got this weird pattern. I don't know how that's gonna look. I may not be able to stretch it, but I'm gonna cut it and have some sticking out a little bit further on both sides. We'll see if I like it with the pattern on it. I'm a little concerned, but we'll see. Maybe it'll just be great. Maybe we won't see enough of it on the other side that it will look weird. Maybe we will. <laughs> no, it does not work. It has to be kept the size that it is. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I'm gonna just stick it down and that way I'll fiddle all the other things around it.
Ah, yeah. Trial and error, right? It's just paper. I keep telling myself that. It's just paper. It's not the end of the world. If you mess it up, it's fine. Buy another sheet. <laughs> That'll have to do. I get better. It's not. Oh, maybe I'll stick a little bit up in the corner. That's what I'll do. So, do you layer papers? Like, do you do layering? Do you hate layering? Do you struggle with layering? Do you, uh, do you hate cutting up papers to make layers? Because <laughs> that tends to be my biggest problem when it comes to layering. It's like, do I have to sacrifice this whole piece just to make a little layer on here? So, yes, yes, Sharon. <laughs> Yeah, I I love the idea of layers, but having to cut up a whole sheet to, to have pieces is a real a problem for me. So I love it when you get like papers that have, you know, like double sides are great when you can use both sides. And like I've already used some of this paper, so I didn't mind cutting up a little bit more of it. I still saved some of it, so I would uh, have that. Um, but yeah, like to cut this paper to use like a mat or something of this, I'd have to wreck this paper and that kind of hurts my heart a little bit. <laughs> so, Missy says I usually buy two sheets just so I can have one for layers. Sheila says, oh, Dices, that as a newbie, she struggles with layers. And uh, oh, Sheila said last weekend, here it filled the pool all of the fluff stuff oh my gosh yeah i recently have started using um six by six uh six by six paper pads or six by eight paper pads for layering and saving my 12 by 12 only buying the sheets of the ones i absolutely love and i know will make good backgrounds so i don't have to cut into any of them or i cut them in half and use half of like cardstock so i can use the paper on two layouts or whatever but yeah i uh, i use the six by six size of the of the same you know line yeah yeah because that way you know a like are you gonna use a million little pieces of the six by six for starters <laughs> but yeah like otherwise it's just like how many pieces of paper am i gonna chop <laughs> like and just take like i just need this little amount right like you just need this little tiny bit <laughs> but sometimes it's tough because sometimes the six by six depending on how they do the pack, sometimes they shrink those patterns down so much. And then you're still putting like these little tiny patterns onto a big page. And so sometimes that doesn't work, but some of them are perfect for it. And you're like, yay. <laughs> so it all just depends. It's, it's funny. I think all of these papers in here are totally different. Like every single piece that I've seen in here is a different pattern. So that's kind of cool. I just love this so much and I want to put it on this page, but I also don't want to cut it. <laughs> so, oh, the, the struggles are real people. <laughs> but I think I'm going to use a little bit more purple, but I'm going to cut it out of the center of here because you know, that one doesn't hurt my, it's not going to break me to cut this paper, but I, uh, some of the other ones, I'm like, they're just too pretty to cut. <laughs> and this will give me a nice little piece of purple that I can sneak in here. There, look at that. There we go. Lovely little shot of purple.
And actually these little trim edges might be good for some of the stuff too. So build the layers, build the layers. Oh, if I was really good, I would like actually make myself a snowflake out of this paper. Right? Am I that good? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to cut this a bit. Oh, good. Okay, so this is part of that frame. And you can see I've cut it just so that this little bit of purple sticks out off the edge there. And it looks really good when I tuck it under. And you can see a little bit of this and then the purple edge. So I'm liking that. Yeah, I'm not... Um, I'm definitely not as good at layers as like Victoria Marie. She she actually wrote, <laughs> she made the class called Layering Like a Boss and she like makes it super good. Uh, Brielle says, I feel so differently. I love using up paper in any way. So layers are great. Chamel had this great class in using a ton of layers in two colors that uses up so many layers, so many leftovers. And... Uh, yeah, no, I think, you know, I'm always happy to use papers that I've bought, like 100% um, happy to use them. Sometimes it just, it's like, if I'm only going to use like this tiny little piece of it, maybe that paper had a better destiny, <laughs> better destiny than, than like the little tiny bit that I've given it <laughs> to do, right? Like, I guess um, it's a, just a funny way of looking at what that might mean. Yeah. It's part of what leads to hoarding the stuff though, right? Because if a paper is never if it's always too good to use, why, why, why is it too good to use for the memories that I want to tell? Right? Like, so there's the struggle. <laughs> there's, the, there's the struggle. Okay, that looks good. Get that layer in there. I saved another little piece of my purple. We'll see if we need that somewhere else. Oh, I'm gonna cut it in half. Okay, so that's gonna stick out here. Good. Okay, so I think I've got my layers built. Now I can start adding any extra little embellishy kind of things that I want to have on here. I think somewhere I have um, little clear sparkly-ish snowflake deep embellishments. They're kind of like sequins almost, but they're snowflakes. So I think those are right here in the cart beside me. Hoping that they're right there because if they're not, I don't know where they are. <laughs> um, 
Joyce says, Janet on RTS says to cut a piece off and then it's easier to go ahead and use it. I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> you saw me earlier, right? When I um, was cutting up the beach paper, I, I like just went and I cut a little piece out of it and I'm like, okay. After that, it was like easy to chop it up, right? Because <laughs> now it's all just like scraps that you can use. <laughs> But that first little cut to cut that swimsuit out of that piece of paper was like, am I just going to cut out this one little piece? Is that all I'm cutting that for? <laughs> and sometimes it's true. <laughs> sometimes it's all you're doing. Okay. So you can see I've got like, just a little tiny corner in there because I wanted more of that color and I'm limited in it. Um, so I've done a, a couple little paper conservation tricks on this one. But when all I wanted was like a little bit of a corner on the edge there, that's all I needed, right? And then it gave me enough that I could create another layer here. And this looks like it will be a strip that goes all the way across once I stick this on, but really it's, it was too small to do that otherwise. So it just like fools your eye. I'm using all the cheater methods that I grew up on guys. <laughs> and I still do it. <laughs> Everybody else says, go, Alice, go. Well, and it's just a way to like stretch the pieces and to kind of look at our, look at kind of what we have, right? Without, you know, totally going crazy. Like I have layouts that are crazy, but like, let's be real. Like if you take, you know, three sheets of paper to make a page, no, you're going to take four because you're going to take one just for your background. And then if you want to create layers, you're going to have at least two or three sheets, which is going to give you two sides, hopefully, if it's double-sided paper. So now you've got more patterns to mix in and about. Then, you know, at some point you had to buy some kind of title, alphas. You're going to do something for a title. Maybe you bought a stamp set that's going to be perfect on this page. And then, you know, you've got a package of little fancy things and some little die cutty things. Like how much did that one page really cost you to do one page, right? Like it's pretty easy for that page to be like 20 bucks or more. <laughs> and, you know, ideally you tell yourself, don't worry, it's all good. I'll use that stamp set again. <laughs> but then do you like, you know, um, I've got a lot of stamp sets. I don't have them behind me anymore, but I've got a lot of stamp sets and some of them were used once. Some of them got used a lot. So those are the great, right? But you know, the things that we tell ourselves we're going to do and the things that we actually end up doing sometimes are very different. And this hobby can be a crazy expensive hobby if we let it, right? But there's a total le level of control that we have as far as that goes, right? Um, I'll pull something out here in a second. I know I'm in the middle of working this, but it's fine. Um, So when I was doing Close to My Heart, um, I was doing workshops and classes and stuff all the time. Sheila says the double page spread I did of my sister's wedding was $75 because of the lace I used. Yeah, right? Like stuff happens that gets us to that point. I bought a stamp set and it was uh, Alta New, which are beautiful and gorgeous. It was like layered rose flowers and stuff like that. The stamp set was $65 <laughs> for a stamp set. It didn't include dies. It was just the stamp set. I'm just like, that might be my only Alton new stamp set that I own. <laughs> and it is. I haven't bought any more. <laughs> um, I might have a globe one that I had bought before. But yeah, I'm just like, that's insane. Like what? I, I can't buy stamp sets for that much money. So one thing that I 
like when I was doing close to my heart, all of uh, my people would say, oh, scrapbooking is just so expensive. And I'm like, you guys are looking here and saying, yeah, it's super expensive. I can't afford to scrapbook, but scrapbooking doesn't have to be like that. Right. So we did a class, I called it economical scrapbooking. And I have like a, um, handout that I did. I could find the handout maybe, maybe, um, if I write this down, um, And basically I shared a bunch of tips and we did a class and we made an album like this one. So this album is not a big fancy album. I think it cost $12 or something. It was pretty cheap for the actual book. And we put it together and we bought one paper pack for the book and the paper pack probably had, what were they 12 or 15 sheets of paper in the paper pack? And we bought one package each of these little um, cork letters. I'll just hold them up here. And then we made our pages um, with simple designs, right? Like there's nothing fancy. I don't have all like a ton of embellishments. I have some embellishments. We bought a packet of these little tag things so that we could pull tags out and have journaling on them. But you'll see like the layers are cardstock, this one packet of papers, and it's just creative use of the supplies that we had and using it for layers, using our cardstock. And when you look through this book, do you look at this and say, hey Alice, where's your journaling? Yes, you do. <laughs> Um, but you also look at it and other than the fact that there's no journaling in this book and that happened all the time when I did classes, right? Do a class and not add my journaling. Um, but you look at the book, it has all of the stuff that a scrapbook needs. And I think we made this scrapbook with the album for $40 or less for the whole scrapbook with all the embellishments and everything. And that's a whole book. Like maybe printing photos might have cost me and more, but like at the time we had Walmart to print at, because I can tell these are Walmart prints and they're all super dark and horrible. Um, and that was, um, you know, they would do their prints for 10 cents a print or something, right? So it wasn't super crazy for your pictures either. And I look at that and I'm like, we let this hobby get away from us and we let it cost a lot of money because we think that we need more things. But when it comes down to it, like we need less than we think we need. And especially if you're doing a project, like an album like that, where everything is part of a theme, the album actually is a lot more cohesive because I used that one paper line that one pack of paper, that one, like those certain embellishments, because I chose them to go with that, it made the album feel very consistent. You flip through and it feels like the summer of 2011 without having all of the extras. Now, I'm the first person to say, I live with excess. <laughs> I have plenty of scrapbook stuff. So I don't scrapbook like this all the time. But that's also a choice. Like I choose that and it doesn't have to be that bad. It doesn't have to be that crazy. So if you uh, have a more moderate scrapbooking budget or you just want to like not have to deal with the energy that having so much stuff takes up because it does, right? If you have more stuff, you're, you're using up more space. You're, you're spending more time looking for things, fetching things, finding things, organizing things then you are sometimes actually doing the scrapbooking. Sharon's like, yes, yes. Like <laughs> she knows. <laughs> and uh, first one to admit, like <laughs> I'm there, but I think that it's amazing what we can do with a little bit of creativity and the realist, like what's actually more important. The, my only regret with this album is not 
that I didn't put sequins on the pages or sparkles or glitter or something like that. My only regret is that the, I don't have words in that book. Like I have titles, but I don't have words. And so, you know, that's a lesson to myself too, right? And thankfully, I don't have many projects like this anymore. I don't have any, like, I don't make the pages and forget to add journaling. I do my journaling now. And I could go back and add some some thoughts and things from looking at this. I, yeah, I said, you can still add the journaling in the sparkles. Yeah, I can still go back and add the journaling. It's not as fresh as when it was new, right? Because, you know, I'll look at the pictures and it might help me remember things, but I won't have some of the stories that I knew at the time. So it's too bad, right, that I didn't do that. But I can add what the best that I can now. So just extra thoughts on scrapbooking <laughs> as we go down the lane. Um, but what I've found like for myself is that using kits really helps me. Like you pay for your kit up front, but because all of the things go together, the pages come together so nicely. So I guess that's part of my takeaway from that is that, um, you know, there's ways to make things work in an economical fashion so that you can have a budget so that you can still have fun things. Like when I order my kits from the wild hair kits, I get all of this stuff. Well, look at how many things I have left over. I still have tons of great pieces here to play with and to add to layouts. And, you know, I didn't even crack this baby open. So, you know, like there's so many good things in here. And that kit was like 40 bucks, I think for the papers and I got that paper pad in here. So there's a lot that I can do with this. And you've seen like, you know, the paper pad can be stationary, it can be pages. You can do a mini album with this. You could do, you know, you can cut them up and chop them up for, for, for layers for your pages. So it's just fun to, to kind of see like that versatility that you can build for yourself out of that stuff. So different thoughts just thinking about things. So I'm not finished this, but I have to move on for today. Um, I'll hopefully get it finished up right away. I'm going to post this up right away so that I have that done. And I'll post up the happy hour from our scrap happy gals as well. Get that done before I leave today. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to you for spending this time with me because I love getting together. You, crowdsourcing your ideas. I'm all over that. Thank you so much. <laughs> because my page that I made here today, oh, I will add the journaling. I do get that done now. Um, yeah, like I just love it. And did I think of like a, a bite of the page? No. Did I think of the title for the page? No. Like these are the things that I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts and ideas with. If during these times, if you ever like, hey, I'm working on a page, I need a good title, share this stuff. It's super fun. We will have another session um, in June. I have to look at the dates. Um, I'm a swim coach in the summer and we have a swim meet nearly every weekend. So that kind of throws a little wrench into this. I may have to do this on a different day of the week, even on a Friday or something. So I'll be looking at that, what I can do for dates. Maybe we'll do an evening crop. So that's another option. So thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations to Mary, the winner of our wild hair kit. If you are interested in getting a wild hair kit, I encourage you. I can, I've showed you how awesome they are, what kind of fun you can have with them. Go to thewildhairkits.com to pick one up. They have two different sizes, so you can get like a little kit or, or the deluxe kit. This is the deluxe kit that I had. Um, yeah, and have a super fun weekend so that you have lots of fun things to scrapbook about. If you're doing load, I can't wait to see your pages. Flickr is starting to come back. It's looking a little more functional. My app worked for a moment here. The, like when I checked earlier, I'm like, we'll see. Hopefully it's working and we'll be back on track with things. Load up when you can and just have the best time scrapbooking. If you're interested in more information about the Scrap Happy family, we do lots of fun things every single month. We have a happy hour where we get together. 
we have a movie night where we watch some scrappy videos and talk about them kind of like a book club. We do this scrapbook live and invite people to join us. We have a plan session every month. We actually have Scrap Smarter coming next week. That's going to be on the 30th at 9 a.m. Pacific, 10, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time. 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to talk about Traveler's Notebooks and that's free for people to come and join us for the first week. So that's super fun. Marg said an evening scrap would be great. So yeah, we'll look at that for June probably. Um, yeah, this is super fun. That we, we're doing a lot of fun things. Load is just one of the fun things, but it's super fun. Deadline for reunion is coming up um, on the 4th. So we're actually having an in-person get together in Calgary this summer, July 26th to 28th. So that's going to be amazing. So if there's anything I can give you information on, you can always email me at support at scrapheavy.org. Or if you get one of the emails to come to this event, you can always hit reply to that as well. So I do return the emails. Okay. Thanks so much for joining me. Happy scrapping. Have an awesome day. And uh, yeah, let's do, go make some awesome scrapbooking things. I love it.